Hi Year 2, I'm back to go through another text with you today. Before we begin, let's look at your answers from the last lesson on Tiddlick the Frog. You were asked to sequence events from the story. Sequence events, you have to find them in the text to be able to work out in which order they go. So here was a task that you were set. The first one was already done for you. The second one should be Snake, World and Twirled. Number three should be She Twisted and Turned. Number four should be, but still Tiddalik did not laugh. Number five should be, snake danced faster and faster. And number six should be, until she tied herself in a big knot. For number seven, you could come up with your own sentence. I went for, a large sound was heard. It was Tiddalik laughing. But you could have had the other animals were about to help to untie him, or that the snake was asking for assistance. Tiddalik the Frog was a story from another culture. It was from Australia. Today we will read another story from another culture. The story is called Lakshmi and the Clever Washerwoman. Lakshmi is the Hindu goddess of wealth and good fortune. In this story it is a special time of the year, almost a festival of Diwali. This is when the goddess will bless the people with good luck when she sees they have honoured her by putting little lamps in the windows of their houses. Let's first look at some of the vocabulary we will come across in the story. Now we have a king and a queen. We have a palace and around the palace there are beautiful peacocks. We have palm trees. We have a candle. We have gold coins. We have a basket, crow, bamboo, a type of plant, necklace and sari. Now let's hear part one of the story. A task will be set after it, so listen carefully. Long, long ago, a king lived with his wife, the queen, in a huge palace at the heart of a great city. The palace was built of pink stone and stood in magnificent gardens where palm trees swayed and peacocks roamed the perfect lawns. The king and queen were getting ready to celebrate, for it was a special time of year. Tomorrow, it would be Diwali, the festival to honour Lakshmi, the gentle goddess of wealth and good fortune. Each year at Diwali, people would put little lamps in their windows and place lanterns outside, hoping that Lakshmi would see their homes in the darkness of night and bless them with good luck. Every year, on the day before Diwali, the king would buy the queen an expensive present. One year, he had given her an elephant to ride around the palace gardens. Another year, he had given her a sari covered in jewels. And this year, the king's present to the queen was no less grand. A beautiful necklace made of pearls. I can't wait to show it off to everyone, said the queen, as she took her husband's present without a word of thanks, for in truth she was rather rude and ungrateful. Each morning the queen would go for a swim in a nearby river. Of course she couldn't risk damaging her valuable necklace, so this morning when she arrived at the river, she took it off and left it on the river bank under a bamboo tree. It will be perfectly safe there, thought the queen. After all, no one would ever dare to steal from the queen. And with that, she stepped into the cool water to swim. The queen was right, of course. No person would ever dare to steal from the queen. But a crow isn't a person. And on this day, a crow, perched on a branch in the bamboo tree, looked down and spied the necklace glinting in the sun. In a flash, it swooped down, grabbed the precious treasure in its beak, and flew away. Stop! Stop! cried the queen. But it was too late. Away flew the crow, further and further, until it was gone from the queen's sight. 
some distance away, another woman was also by the river. Like the queen, this woman came to the river every morning. But apart from that, she couldn't have been more different to the queen. She was a washerwoman, and every day she came from her home in the poorest part of the city to crouch down on the bank and wash clothes for the people who paid her. The washerwoman was scrubbing a sari when she looked up and saw a crow overhead. The crow had something glinting in its beak, something which the crow dropped, something which landed on the riverbank. The washerwoman could hardly believe it. There, right beside her, glinting in the sunlight, was a necklace. She picked it up to look at it more closely. It was very precious. She was sure of that. Why, it looked like it was made from real pearls. Who could such a valuable necklace belong to? She wondered. And what should I do with it? If I sell it, I'd be rich. I'd never need to scrub another sari for as long as I live. Then the washerwoman shook her head. But the necklace isn't mine to sell. One thing I do know. It needs to be kept safe. I shall take it home with me until I can decide what to do with it. What do you think the washerwoman woman might do with the necklace? For your task, we have some retrieval and inference questions. When answering a retrieval question, you will need to pick out information directly from the text. When answering inference questions, you will need to work out what the author is suggesting using clues from the story, which are not directly written. The questions I have are shown here. There is a copy of these questions in our reading folder. The questions we have are where did the king and queen live? Why did the people put little lamps in their houses at night? On what day did the king buy the queen's gift? What three gifts had the king already given the queen? What do you think the king would have said to the queen when she told him about losing the necklace? And why didn't the washwoman keep the necklace for herself? Remember you will need to check the text carefully to find out the answer to these questions. But we would also like you to decide which questions you think are retrieval and which are inference and tick the correct box to show this. Then have a go at answering the questions. You will also see at the bottom there are two blank spaces. So we'd like you to have a go at thinking of your own reference question that you could ask, a retrieval question, sorry, and one inference question that you could ask. We will discuss your answers at the start of the next part of the story in our YouTube video. Remember, we would love to see the answers that you produce for these questions, so please send them in to our year two email. See you next time.